Okay, so what we have here is the classic buoyancy problem. Um, you're given an object that is sitting in a fluid, and you're told that some fraction of it is either in the water or out of the water, and you have to figure out something about the densities of the fluid or the densities of the object. So in this case, we're told that uh, there's this iceberg, um, it's floating in the water. 10% of the iceberg is above the water, right? So we're told that 10% above the water. And the other 90% is below. Uh, and we have to find the density of the iceberg. Uh, and so some of the things we're given, um, we're given the density of the fluid, right? Which is the salt water in this case, is... 1025 kilograms per meter cubed. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all we need, actually. Um, this, the total volume, I'm going to call the total volume of the iceberg V berg. Okay. So I think, I think we're pretty, pretty well set up. So the first thing you want to do with any of these is draw a free body diagram, right? So this is really a balance of forces. That's why this iceberg is floating. So what does the balance of forces look like? Well, I'm going to draw my iceberg as a point, a point-like particle. <laughs> There's some buoyancy force acting upwards. Fb is equal to the density of the fluid times the volume of the displaced fluid times gravity, right? And then there's this other one, there's this other force, I'll make it purple, which is the force of gravity, right? Fg is equal to the mass of the berg times g, right? And we know, actually, that we know uh, how mass relates to density, that this is actually related to the density of the berg times the volume of the berg times g, right? Okay, so now that we have now that we have this equation written down, we know that in equilibrium, uh, the forces are balanced, right? F net is equal to <clears throat> F berg, um, which is pointing up, so I'm going to make it a plus sign and then minus Fg, which is pointing down, and that must be equal to zero, right? And so we can, we can rearrange this to get an equation for ourselves, uh, which is Fb is equal to Fg, which is equal to, if we look, what's Fberg? Well, it's rho F Vf times g is equal to V berg, or the density of the iceberg, volume of the iceberg times g. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, and the g's cancel out, right? And so we're left with this formula: rho f Vf is equal to rho berg. Feedberg. So it sort of it sort of looks like we're we're stuck at this point because um, we don't know the volume of the iceberg, we don't know the volume of the fluid displaced, but we're given a very a very specific piece of information. We're told that um, ten percent of the iceberg is above the water. So because ten percent is above water, well. That must mean that the volume of the fluid displaced must be equal to 90% of the volume of the iceberg, right? 10% of it's above water. So the displaced fluid must be equal to 0.9 times that. So we plug that in. So we have rho F times 0 0.9 V berg is equal to rho berg times v berg. And uh, we see that the, the volume of the iceberg actually cancels out, right? I guess it doesn't go to zero, it just cancels out. <coughs> v 
do that. Um, and this implies that the density of the iceberg is equal to 0 0.9 times the density of the fluid. Um, and we have that number from the fluid, and if I plug in that number from before, I get 923 kilograms per meter cubed. Right, I think this number was, what was it? 1025. Cool.